What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to another episode of Finessing Your Formas for Fire Emblem Heroes. So this month, we're gonna be getting Shadows of Valentia units in the Hall of Forms. Three of them are Fallen units. Only Sonia is not a Fallen unit, at least not yet. So in this video, I'll be going over which skills are the best skills you should try to get on these Pharma units, and if these units are gonna be worth your free-to-play Pharma Soul or not. And even if you're purchasing a Pharma Soul, it's super important to get bang for your buck because you're essentially paying for a unit. And if you have any kind of questions about Pharma Souls or Pharma units, be sure to check out my comprehensive Pharma guide linked in the description. A lot of times people have a lot of misconceptions and confusion and the video in the description will pretty much clear all of them. So it's a great start if you want to do anything with Pharma units and I highly highly recommend that. And as always if you guys do enjoy these kinds of Pharma videos then I would really appreciate if you could leave a like. And if you're new here do consider subscribing because I do make these videos for every single Hall of Forms and I make these in advance so that you can have time and space to think about which skills you really want to go on your Pharma units before the Hall of Forms actually starts. So that said, let us begin. So the big star of this Hall of Forms is going to be Fallen Celica. She recently got a pretty solid weapon refine in Beloved Sophia, and this weapon refine is pretty synergetic with its primary condition and its secondary condition. Celica is always going to be having competition as a sword infantry unit, as this is a very stacked class type but beloved Sophia is pretty decent with what it does even though she's like the star of this batch it's not gonna be worth it to just go for her with your free pharma soul um, because she isn't really gonna be giving you too much value as a one-off copy unless you're trying to finish your merch project uh, which can be tough as a free to player but if you do buy pharma souls and you just have a lot of them and you really like Celica then she is worth snagging because she can have a lot of premium skills as her base kit isn't really all that impressive but for the people who just have their free Pharma Soul, uh, a one-off copy isn't really going to be doing too much for you. So as for her builds and what skills you should go for, keep in mind that Beloved Sophia does have a Weapon Refine, and you can get the special Weapon Refine in Hall of Forms itself to save yourself some Divine Dues if you have not refined that weapon yet. And the first build is the ideal build which I would recommend for her. It plays into her strengths really well. This encounter is easily her best thought is skill because she gets a lot of extra stats so she can function in both phases and especially tank in the enemy phase. The self-sufficiency does help her quite a bit and that's why you could also go with Spurn which can further increase her defensive capabilities and she can work in both phases with this kind of build. Joint Drive Speed further helps with the damage reduction skill and with couple of merges this Spurn and Distant Counter build can definitely give you quite a bit of value and she also has the self-sufficiency so that's really good. The second build does have Null Follow Up and Pulse Smoke. Null Follow Up is also a really good slot B option for her and Pulse Smoke could be an option if you want to use her in Aether Raids where she is actually pretty decent. So that's an option always and damage reduction skills are also going to be a very strong option for slot B. The third build is basically if you don't want to bother with Distant Counter and on like very low merges this could help you as you get more speed with Attack Speed Solo. And Time Pulse could also be used if you want to trigger a higher cooldown special in a single round of combat. And if you already have refined Beloved Sophia and you're trying to merge up your existing Celica into your Pharma Celica, then Pledged Blade Plus could be a weapon that you could try to get as it's a premium weapon. So that could be something that is worth snagging just for the aesthetic and just as an alternate option. Fallen Delthea is a Grail unit and she's a blue infantry mage. She definitely has competition with someone like Brania or Iliana, but she's definitely a pretty popular merge project. She does have the Death Tome, which is her preferred weapon. She is a Gen 3 unit and she's probably gonna get a weapon refine in like one or two years. So she could definitely get value from the premium skills if you're a really big Fallen Delthea or Delthea fan in general. Um, but again just a one-off copy of her isn't really going to be helping you a lot and we have a lot of really really insane blue mages who can perform extremely well at low merges or like unmerged so she does have competition so only go with this if you're trying to plus and merge her as a free to player and you really want to get the premium skills otherwise it's not really worth it to just go for the one-off copy getting her from the hall of forms also reduces the grail cost if you haven't already plus and merged her and if you already have her at plus 10 merge, then it doesn't really do too much for you. You basically have to just merge up that plus 10 unit into this Pharma unit. And if you already use your trade fruits, then you have to use it again. So it really depends on player to player what you have done with your Fallen Delthea. 
In any case, if you're interested in her, then this is basically the build which you could go for. The first build I would consider is pretty much the ideal one. You want to get Flora Guide Plus as the weapon. It's a really good weapon with the in-combat debuffs and it can also help your allies. So it's the one to get here. And you want to get Susparo 3, which is one of the best slotted options for her. Lot Speed Resistance is also really good offensively. And Time Pulse is such a good offensive option that you definitely want to get that. It's essentially her best slot option. So you definitely cannot go wrong with this first build and it's going to be giving you value. Even when Death gets a weapon refine. And if you want to run Desperation as her slot beat, then that could be done as well. Juicy Wave Plus is also an option which has the Desperation built into it. So it pretty much frees up her slot B skill to run something else like Null Follow Up. So you could run Attack Speed Push 4 which can help you get into the range of Juicy Wave Plus. But keep in mind if you try to use this with her Death Tome then it might just push her off the threshold of Attack Speed Push 4. So just keep that in mind. Not the best option to use with the Death Tome. But if you want to use it with Juicy Wave Plus then it could definitely be an option. Fury 4 on the other hand is a bit more universal option that just works with her preferred weapon as well as Juicy Wave Plus so I would consider this a bit better. And this pretty much gives her extra bulk too which is really good with the Death Tome and if you have her at plus 10 investment. So that could be done and again Loud Speed Resistance is going to be a pretty nice option for her. You can also go with Sturdy Impact and Lull Attack Speed. Death Tome does make her a bit bulky if you want to use that, so Sturdy Impact does help her with her defense which is definitely lacking. And this could also be used in Aetherite's defense if you want to use her there. But Sturdy Impact in general works for a unit like her, who doesn't have the highest base defense but can get decently bulky. But it does work for her and does let her survive some matchups. And again, Swiss Barrow 3 is an option with Null Follow Up so you could go with that. And if you cannot really get Time Pulse then John Drive Speed can also help her be really really fast and uh, definitely face the speed creep that we have been facing in Faye. So that is uh, basically the options for Fall and Delthea. They are pretty straightforward honestly. Um, and if you are trying to plus and merge her and you, if you haven't finished her then this is a pretty good chance to I guess get the premium skills on her if you are a really really big fan of her. Sonia is a green infantry mage and honestly we have got such amazing green infantry mages in recent times like the Seer, Legendary Celica, uh, Young Merrick and now Luwin also got a fantastic weapon refine. So Sonia definitely faces quite a bit of competition but she is pretty unique because of Dark Excalibur. So this weapon gives her plus 10 damage when the special triggers. This is of course true damage so that is really good. And the weapon refine is basically like a double quick and pulse. So at start of turn 1 it will pre-charge her special by minus 2. So this can pretty much help you set up stuff like special spiral, AoE specials as you'll see later on in the builds. And that is pretty much her niche. Which is to use pre-charge specials and just spam like area and effect specials with the help of special spiral. And the plus 10 damage can definitely help her with the damage output. But Sonia as a one-off copy again is not going to be the best option. Um, for most people and she definitely needs some merges um, as a really old unit to function in the modern times. So Sonia can definitely appreciate some really premium skills. The first build is the ideal build to just make use of her strengths which is the pre-charging of specials. So you want to use Time Pulse, Quick and Pulse, Dark Excalibur to basically have a pre-charge Glacies and that is going to be hitting so hard. And even at like low merges she can be such a threat in something like Aetherite's defense. And Mirror Impact can just help you with the extra damage on Glacies. And Lull Attack Resistance is also really good. So this is like the build which plays into her strengths really well. And even at low merges this can be a pretty scary option. Um, if you really care about Aetherite's defense that is. But the second build is the universal build for Sonya. Which just uh plays into her strength and can work in several game modes and that is abusing AoE specials with Dark Excalibur. The plus 10 true damage actually gets added to the area and effect specials so that does help her with the damage output and for that you want to run special spiral and time pulse is going to be helping you set that up um, especially if you run someone with infantry pulse like a dancer which is not really hard to do and immediately you could have a pre-charge AoE special and just get the ball rolling. Unfortunately, because she doesn't get minus one special cooldown on her weapon permanently like Ophelia, so she wants to run Heavy Blade Sacred Seal instead of something like Hardy Bearing. So you want to run that so that you can just cycle through the AoE specials. And honestly, this is a pretty powerful option on her. You definitely want to run something like Fury 4 or Life and Death to get the visible attack stat as those are counted with the AoE specials. And Life and Death could also be used, but it does cut her resistance, so it could be a bit annoying. 
Again, you can get the Dark Excalibur with its refine if you want to save some divine dues, but if you have already like refined it, then try to get Plagian Torch Plus. It's a really rare weapon and it's the first time it's appearing in Hall of Forms. So it's definitely worth getting because of how rare and unique it is. So it could be a pretty nice alternate option. And if you want to get even more true damage, then Heavy Blade 4 can work in the slot A. And this could work with a couple of merges if you already have that on your Sonya. So this could be an option. And finally, if you just don't really care about the AoE spam builds or the pre-charge and you just want to use her as an offensive option, then Attack Speed Push 4 could be used with like a plus speed IV at max investment. I really wouldn't go this route because there are other units who could do this role better, but still it's an option nonetheless. I kinda just prefer her as a special spamming mage or with a pre-charge special in the rage defense. That's the part where Sonya can still do a pretty decent job. The final unit we have is Fallen Burkut. So time has not been kind to Fallen Burkut as she is a Lance Cavalier. Dusil completely dunks on Burkut because Dusil has insanely good bulk and he can function in both phases because of his auto doubles. He's a menace. On the other hand, Burkut is just stuck with the enemy phase and his weapon is just a conditional distant counter weapon which even has a penalty of hurting his allies for 20 damage. So that could definitely hurt you quite a bit and you definitely have to build a team around him that could utilize that recall damage productively. The best part about his weapon is probably the fact that he can negate the follow-ups of the enemies but because he's such a slow unit, most of the units who have an auto follow-up skill like Bullfighter or just in general are gonna be able to double him easily. But still, I hope that this weapon can get a refine like maybe one or two years later and then Burkut fans can rejoice. So he's not really worth it going with your free pharma soul obviously as a one-off copy. Someone like Dusil is obviously gonna be giving you much much more value. However, if you're a Burkut fan, then this is a really good chance to get some really, really premium skill on him. And it's also worth noting that you can get an extra merge on your Pharma unit by utilizing this uh, Divine Codes 2 section where you can get Fallen Burkut for just 1200 codes. And that is definitely worth it if you are a big, big Burkut fan. For his builds, if you're interested, you can try to get uh, different lands like Candy Cane Plus or Flowing Lance or Spirited Spear. It really depends on which kind of lands you want to get so that your Burkut can look Burkut in the aesthetic. So I would just recommend Flowing Lands personally, but Candy Cane Plus is also a pretty good option. The first build is the ideal build I would suggest because Lull Attack Defense is by far the best slot B skill, so you should definitely get it if you're trying to get Burkut from here. And Attack Res Unity is a really really good option. Unity skills are just crazy good because debuffs are just flying around. And it also doubles down on the condition of his preferred weapon where it requires you to be within two spaces of an ally. So it just works out really well. And if you want to use him in Aether Raids, then Attack Res Unity is also really strong there. And Pulse Smoke could help you in Aether Raids. But if you don't really care about that, then Joint Drive Attack is the best slotsy option that you could go for. Other than that, if you are not really interested in getting the Unity skill, which I think is the best option for a slot A, you can try to get another tier 3 stand skill. The Warding Stance 4 which he comes with isn't really the best and you might as well go with the Dual Stance skill to get more stats. Something like Sturdy Stance or Mirror Stance can definitely be an option. Otherwise you could just go with the full defensive route and go with Bracing Stance 3 which would otherwise be really hard to get because it's on Mila. So his options are kind of limited because he's just an enemy face cavalier. Um, but uh, you could definitely try to get something like the first build and that could help you quite a lot. Overall, for free triple players, a one-off copy of any of these units is not really going to be doing too much for them unless you're a big, big fan of these characters and if you already have a merch project going. So I would just suggest you to save your free Pharma Soul and wait and watch and what kind of other units we get in the future. We are going to be getting Fire Emblem 4 Holoforms next month, I believe. So let me know in the comments who you would like to see. And make sure to share this video with your friends if they are trying to build up any of these Pharma units or if you know they are big fans of any of these characters, they can definitely get some premium skills. I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their constant support and if you enjoyed then please be sure to leave a like and a comment, helps me tremendously and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as confused as Sonya as to why she's stuck with 3 units who are loyal servants of Duma. So that's it, I'll see you guys next time, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.